It's been more than a decade since the last big leap in thermal sensor technology. And that leap brought us more resolution, better performance, and it ultimately increased the capabilities of night hunters. So we've been waiting for more than 10 years for this next big leap, and it's finally here. In this advancement in sensor technology, it really marks the beginning of a new era in thermal. As night hunters, we've always wanted more performance out of our optics. But the problem was we couldn't do that with existing technology. It had reached its limits. Reached its limits. So to take it to the next level, we knew there could only be one solution. In 2020, Infrared developed an HD sensor, so now we just needed to make it a weapon site. high definition camera we were blown away by the quality of the images it was producing but we just kept thinking how incredible would this be in a weapon site Night hunters have had to choose between a long range and a close range scope. But because of this recent advancement in sensor technology, those days are over. We are now officially in a new era of high definition thermal. My mission has always been to find and improve new technologies for night hunting. I want to help give night hunters the ability to see farther, to see in more detail, and the power to capture that and share it with the world. It's a slow process, but every year we keep searching. We're searching for something new, we're searching for another advancement to deliver to the night hunting community. I remember each one of these advancements along the way. Each one has a special impact a unique contribution. I remember the first 640, the first 12 micron, and I remember when we gained the ability to capture video. But there's never been anything like this. We've never been able to see or shoot this far. We've never been able to see this clearly. Those capabilities have always been locked away, hidden from night hunters. It's taken a company like Infrared Outdoor to unleash these capabilities. These capabilities are what night hunters have only dreamed of. It feels as though we've started over, like we started a complete new beginning where we can see new things we've never seen before, an entirely new world, and in a way, a new era. such a monumental task, I want to make sure we brought this new technology to the hunting community the right way. And there's only one person I trust to do the job.
I was fired up when Tyler told me he wanted me to run the very first 1280 Rico. I didn't really know what to think. Um, to be honest with you, I felt felt pretty blessed. First off, thanks Tyler for trusting that I would put it to the test and hopefully get some good stuff with it. But honestly, I was super excited, mainly because I knew exactly what that sensor was capable of. We've ran that same exact sensor for the past couple of years on some of our hunts, and just some of the images coming out of it were just unbelievable. It's basically just an HD camera. It's about, I don't know, probably about that big. Uh, and the thing is just, it's just a beast. I felt in my gut, if they could get that same sensor into a weapon sight, it would be unlike anything any of us had ever seen. And for him to come to my house and say, here you go, I was just beyond excited. I don't know how to explain it. All I knew for the next several nights, maybe months, two months, I was pretty much gonna be unavailable. <laughs> All I knew at this stage is I could not wait to put that reticle on an animal with that much resolution something that I've been waiting on for two years. The very first time I laid eyes on a 1280 IRA camera, from that point forward, I've wanted that thing in a weapon sight. And I will never forget when I looked through that scope for the very first time, it was like I had just died and gone to heaven. I got everything I ever wanted, all balled up in this little bitty neat package called Rico. Holy crap. <laughs> that is nasty. The very, very first thing that I noticed, and I think Tyler did this on purpose, but he didn't tell me it was a 2X base mag. And I've never been a big fan of 2X base mags. Just, we do like to kill stuff far out there. And we also like to shoot, if anybody's ever watched our show, we, we like to get animals as close as possible. Honestly, we like to look at reflections in their pupils. That's how close we like to get them. And the very first thing I noticed when I looked through the scope was the field of view was a, a little bit wider than what I'd been used to in, in the, the MK50 thought, man, I really wish they would have made this a 3X scope. Well, that reservation lasted for probably all of about five minutes. Based on where the industry's been at 640, whenever you start talking about base magnification, that's probably one of the most important things that you have to take into account. When you go to buy a scope is, what does my base mag need to be? That's ground zero. That's where you need to start. Cows and pigs. This ought to be fun. And the reason being is that really dictates how close or how far you really predominantly want to shoot, or it has in the past. When you go to 4X on this scope, it's still 640 resolution, where every other scope out there is basically starting. Not only do I have a really good wide field of view up close, but I also have a really, really long distance that I can shoot with the scope because it's got the resolution to be able to handle it until guys start thinking in terms of 1280 versus 640, they're not gonna understand why a 2X base mag is really the optimal range, because you can do anything with it. It's not just a long range scope and it's not just a close range scope. I read online where a couple of guys had said, well, you lost me at 2X. That's a perfect example of someone who's thinking in terms of 640. You just don't understand like I didn't understand. I was a dummy and jumped to conclusions. But until you actually look through the thing, you can't make any reservations about what the scope is like until you've actually looked through it and ran it. Because I can promise you, this thing is fully capable of killing up close, and it's damn sure capable of killing a long ways out there. When you're dealing with digital zoom, all you're doing is basically taking an image that starts at a certain resolution and you're essentially blowing that sight picture up and pixelating every pixel that's in that image. And what happens when you do that, like every thermal guy knows, it pretty much degrades the image. Well, when you're dealing with digital zoom, resolution is in fact king because nothing can substitute that. Nothing can substitute having more lines to magnify back and forth. You can't do it. I don't care how hard you try, nothing can substitute resolution when you're dealing with a digital zoom world. These pigs are the perfect example of why a 2X base mag is its not a bad thing at all. These pigs were probably 40 to 50 yards away. Uh, obviously, you could have easily killed those with a 3X or even a 4X scope, but in a scenario whenever you have animals that close that take off running, I would tend to one rather be shooting at a group of pigs running full tilt at 30 yards away with a 2X base mag than I ever would with a 3X or a 4X, for sure a 4X. That's just my personal preference. 
when it boils down to it, there's no reason to lose that 2X because you have the resolution in reserve to be able to go and afford that. And that's the main reason why I feel like iRay chose to go with that base mag was because there's no reason to get rid of it. You've got it there and why not go ahead and keep it? At that point, you pretty much appeal to a broader spectrum of hunters. You're not just appealing to long range guys and you're not just appealing to the close range guys. You're appealing to all of them. That's why this is the most versatile scope ever made. These weren't exactly the smartest pigs I'd ever seen. They've kind of been known to be a little bit dumb in this area. Um, we would probably get along good, but I figured if they didn't run or haul ass and just completely get out of Dodge, there was gonna be a pretty good opportunity to kill at least one or two of them, hopefully if they came back. The first one rolls up there about 40, 50 yards in front of me, bang flop, right in the ear hole. And the second one, I don't know what happened on that one. I'm sure I shanked it. Bottom line is when you only put three stinking rounds in your gun, you probably don't deserve to kill more than two, three at best. When I first saw it, the very first thing that came to mind was that thing looks just exactly like my MK50, my Mark I. This is the one, we've been running this scope for probably the past four years now, and this thing is a hammer. Uh, we've killed hundreds of coyotes with it and pigs, but if you notice, the body of the Rico, the Mark I, is basically the exact same layout, same button design, same everything. It's pretty much like a Mark I with a big giant lens on the front of it. I could tell pretty much from first glance the reason that they did that was basically just to keep the form factor the same. Mainly for a lot of the guys that have already been running all the IRA products, um, they're all used to pretty much uh, the same button layout, ambidextrous buttons where you don't have to be left-handed, right hand. It's pretty much all down the center. It was all pretty much identical to what we were already used to, which I really like because that pretty much eliminates any of the learning curve that you might anticipate for a new product coming out like that. So I knew at this stage it was pretty much just swap it out and keep trucking. I think it's really easy for guys to want to compare. It's like anytime a new optic comes out like this, especially in the thermal world, if a new optic like this comes out, the very first thing they want to do is to is compare it to what they have. That's human nature. I'm always a big fan of if you want to find a real opinion about something, you got to use it yourself. For anybody that wants to jump to conclusions about anything, you know, my suggestion is is to figure out a way to get your hands on one and run it, and then make a decision on on what you think. You know, um, there's lots of good scopes out there, but this is the first one that has this much resolution. I feel pretty confident, probably within the next hopefully the next three to five years. I honestly, I, you know, don't take this the wrong way, Tyler, but I feel, I feel like I, I would love to see other companies come out with their own 1280, believe it or not. And the reason I say that is because what that does to the industry is it benefits the end user and it benefits the cost for everybody. No matter how you look at it, the more, that, the more 1280s that are out there, the cost will go down across the board. And, you know, I want these things to be affordable for, you know, the regular, regular old guy. I don't proclaim to be no rich guy myself. I just got lucky and got some, some of the right friends. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be playing around with these kind of toys. I mean, I just, I don't have that kind of money. The bottom line is, eventually, I feel like that other companies will come around with their own unit that's in the same class that... We can all go and enjoy these things and be able to, to try to push the industry forward because uh, that's really what it needs. Every industry needs competition uh, because that's what, that's what keeps the price in check and that's what, that's what helps push technology to a point where we keep evolving. Uh, if we don't evolve, we're going to eventually die. That's the bottom line. And for me, it's always a positive thing anytime I ever see a company come out with something new like this that I know for a fact it's going to light a fire. It's going to light a fire under every thermal company out there to basically be able to say, here, if you want to try my, if you want to try our 1280, here you go. And that's, to me, that's not a negative thing. That's a positive thing. At this stage, it was like a light bulb went off in my head. It was like, how far can I kill a coyote with a 2X base max scope? You know, most times when guys buy a 2X base max scope, they're not thinking about how far they kill a coyote. They're thinking about how close they kill stuff. 
based on what I just saw, I just wanted to know exactly what this thing was capable of, long range. I'd already killed one at 100. I thought, you know what, let's just start stretching it out there, just see what this thing will do. So I went to 150. I actually eaten on a dead pig we'd shot a couple nights prior, and they were pretty much setting ducks. Still not a far shot by anyone's standards, but it's getting out there a little ways. It's getting out there a little bit far. You know, you're not talking about no chip shot at this stage. I mean, you gotta know how to shoot a little bit, but still 150 yards. Psh, bang flop. So 150 yards, still no big deal. Let's push it out there to 200. I caught this one laying out in the pasture. He was taking a nap, and I kinda had to sweet talk him just a little. Hey. You know, just give him a little bit of sweet nothings. Get him to stand on up. Stand up. No sense in laying down, you just need to stand on up. I was just trying to keep him from laying down. He just hey. look up and then he'd lay right back down. You know, how am I supposed to shoot him like that? Hey, get your ass up. Eventually, finally, he rolls up on his butt and you know, I'm looking at a target that's probably yay wide. Still no problem at full zoom. Still looks like a coyote plain as day. From a degree of difficulty standpoint, it wasn't hard at all. So at this stage, I'm thinking if one looks that clear at 200 yards, 300 to 400 is not out of the realm of possibilities with a 2x base max scope. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting to those ranges where even some of the clearest 640 units tend to struggle at full magnification. You know, we're stretching it on out there to ranges that most guys start to struggle at hitting their target. Again, game over. We think at this point we're shooting at a full grown cow because even at this range, it's still a really defined image. I mean, you can still tell which way he's facing and all of that. That thing can't weigh 10 pounds. No, no. If that. This was a first year pup. And when I say pup, he was this big. No bullshit. He was this big at 400 yards and he still looked like a coyote. So now I'm thinking, you know, if I can hit a little bitty baby, if I could hit a baby coyote at 400 yards with this thing, I wonder how far I could hit a grown one. Hmm. If you really want to find out if Chris is a hero or a zero, tune in to part two.